Hi, in this Unity tutorial, we're going to go over random movement. And um, I have another random movement tutorial. This one would be my second one. And the difference in this random movement tutorial is going to be that the little bots that are going to move around are going to pause for random amounts of time from when they start moving. So when they're green, they're moving and when they're red they're pausing and the pause is anywhere from three to five seconds the other thing that's different with this random video tutorial than the um, first one I did for random movement is the destinations are totally random I'm not using waypoints that they're deciding to move between they're just picking random positions over this ground okay so this is the tutorial in action now let me just explain the parts of it so you could try to do it yourself um, first of all I just started with a scene and scene always has a camera and a direction of light then I created an empty object called level and this is just so I could organize my objects in my hierarchy window the level is just a um, it's just basically an empty game object okay and then to that I made child of the ground and all these gray shapes which are obstacles then I just made sure that level was set to static and when I do that yes you change all the children <laughs> to static okay and the reason I make them static is so that the nav mesh agent will use them when it calculates a nav mesh so to calculate the nav mesh, I just go to um, Window AI Navigation. Look for the navigation window. And when you open up the navigation window, there's a thing called Bake. So I select the Bake button. And then I basically I could just bake my nav mesh. Badunk. And the blue parts are the nav mesh. OK. And what it uses in the baking are any static objects. These bots, they're not static objects. These little um, white um, squares are not static. So they don't get calculated in the nav mesh. So now um, I made another empty game object called bots. This was just another create empty over here. And then to it, I added my first bot. And if you look at it, it has um, it's a cube, so a cube has a transform, a mesh filter, a renderer, and a box collider by default. And then I added the box script. And the box script takes a minimum time to wait and a maximum time to wait. So these are this is the time range that it's going to be random between when the um, bot gets to wherever it's headed. Once it gets there, it waits for... A random time between these two times and then it picks a new location on the ground somewhere to start moving toward and the nav mesh agent is what gives the um, little bot its AI to move across the nav mesh so um, that's easy setting up the scene putting these objects in the scene explain that now for the not so hard part about the script. So I could take a look at one of my bots and look at the script that's on there, double clicking on the script. And here comes the script. I'm in Visual Studio now. And um, since I'm using the nav mesh agent and I'm gonna need to include the Unity Engine AI. And then over here, I wanna make sure that my bot object has a nav mesh agent so in case the user didn't add one I could add one over here when they drag and drop the script onto the um, game object by using require component type of nav mesh agent and what that does is it just makes sure that you have a nav mesh agent on the game object so say for example I made another um, game object here like a sphere 
Where are you, Sphere? Double click on you. Oh, there you are. You're in the ground. Let's pick you up a little bit from the ground so you can see you. So if I made this game object here a sphere and just placed it over my ground. And then I took the bot script because the bot script has require component nav mesh agent. You'll notice right now the sphere doesn't have a nav mesh agent, but when I drag and drop the bot script on it, it adds a nav mesh agent for me. Okay, so that's that's how that works when you use require component. But I'll take you out. Now back to where I was. All right, so in the script, I have two public variables. Well, three of them actually. Min time, max time, and ground. And that's what you see there in the script. Min time, max time, and ground. So ground, it's, it wants to ground. So it knows where it can make a random point over. And then just private to the script, I keep a pointer to the nav mesh agent. And I keep a pointer to something called bounds. So here in the start, I'm just going to take, uh, I'm just going to set my internal nav mesh agent variable NMA equal to the nav mesh agent component of my game object. So this just sets NMA equal to this thing over here, this component. And bounds gets set equal to the ground game object renderer bounds. Bounds is the object that uh, lets us know how big something is in the scene. It lets us know where something is in the scene and you know its extents and everything. So the ground is this brown thing here, which I drag and dropped over here so that my bot could know what the ground is. Okay, so now I have the nav mesh agent component of my game object and I have the bounds of the ground. Now, what happens next is the update function is going to run for every time a frame is drawn in the game. And the way to know if the game object is moving somewhere is if the nav mesh agent has a path. And also if the nav mesh agent has any more distance to travel to get to its destination. I use these both together because on my ground, I have some obstacles here. So in case the, um, the uh, bot is trying to get somewhere in, like over the ground where the obstacle is, it's never really gonna be able to get there. So it'll get as close as it can and maybe it'll just wiggle around a little bit or stop. But when it's basically as close as it can get, I want it to pick a new destination. So that's a comment added in this remain distance greater than one. So if you're about as close as one, or if you don't even have a path, then go ahead and pick a new, a new destination to move toward. All right, so here's a little trick here. Instead of calling pick random destination right off the back to pick a new destination, I use the invoke method. And invoke is a special function of the model behavior class here that lets you say what function you want to call, but you could specify how long to wait before you call that function. So over here, my wait is a random time between the minimum and the maximum time that the user specified in the inspector window. Between the minimum and the maximum time, two seconds, five seconds. So it may pick three seconds, for example. So that means invoke will call pick random destination after three seconds elapses. That's how I do the thing where it waits before it goes to another destination. And just so we could see that the bot is waiting, I just changed the material color of the bot to red when it's waiting. Now after three seconds, it will call pick random destination. And here what I do is I pick a random X coordinate and a random Z coordinate. See how we have X and Z here and X and Z are across the floor. Y would be coming up from the floor. So I just worry about the X and the Z and my bot stays on the ground. I get a random position for X and Z. And then I get a random vector position R pause using 
the random X, the current Y position, and a random Z. And then I tell the nav mesh agent component to set the new destination, which starts the game object to move to it. And just so we know it's in the moving mode, I change the color to green. So that's the script. These are the objects. And all I did was I took the one bot, I drag and dropped it. I'll show you how to make a prefab. Let me delete the one I have. I take the one bot and I drag and drop it in my project assets window. And now this makes what's called a prefab. So I can either drag and drop this into the scene multiple times to add more bots like this, or Okay, these guys up here, I want to make them children of this, so it's all nice and neat. Or the other way I made some of these was I picked one, and then I just pressed Control-D, which made a copy, and then I could pick the control d one and move it. So whatever, now I got a bunch of bots. Let's see if you press play one more time. Ta-da! They're waiting. They all start moving. See, these guys are... I'm having a little bit of traffic jam in there. And maybe I have to set the remaining distance bigger than one so these guys give up and try to go somewhere else. But nobody wants to give up. Everybody's fighting in the middle there. Ooh. But these guys are randomly moving around. They're not stuck in the traffic jam. Let's get rid of this block. <laughs> no, they're still fighting with each other. Come on, guys. Stop fighting with each other. Move. Anyway, there you go. Have fun.